Hey, good Thursday morning, friends. This is Joe. Welcome to my scripture reflection for Thursday, January 25th. <clears throat> Recently, I had a discussion with someone about change and how change is something that we all, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, something that we all deal with, something that affects us all, but something that when we look at it objectively, it has positive things attached to it. Almost always, change brings out something positive. It's just a matter of putting your toe into the water, so to speak, and getting yourself in a place where you are open to changing something. Recently, I changed the time I went to the gym, and I found it to be really positive. At first, it was awkward, but now it's very positive. But small changes can lead to positive big changes, and I just want to mention that as we prepare to talk about our gospel today, which I will ask you to quiet your minds and hearts as we listen to St. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You may know this is my all-time favorite gospel passage. It always has been. It always will be. Reason is because in every interpretation... You hear exactly the same words being used. Go out and proclaim the gospel to all creation. Not to all humans, to all creation. Yes, I have it tattooed on my arm. I'm proud to say that it's there and it'll always be there. And I believe it in the core of my heart. Some may question this, and I've been questioned and I've been in debates about it. But what I'd like to do today is share with you a couple of brief stories of how all creation truly do adhere to the gospel. There was a pit bull. She was abused and abandoned and probably a bait dog. I saved her from a shelter. Her name was Shelby. Not long after, I was stricken very hard with anxiety and depression. Shelby literally was attached to me during this time. She would not let me go. My saving her led to her saving me. That's a sentient being. That's someone who follows the gospel. There's a chicken. Her name is Macy. I've seen her now four years in a row in Las Vegas at a sanctuary. Macy insists upon being held, but not just being held by a human, she buries herself as close to your heart as she can get. I really have affection for Macy, and I look forward to seeing her next time. Someone who comes close to your heart and knows your heartbeat and knows how to make you comfortable and peaceful, that's a sentient being who follows the gospel. There's a pig. His name is Lucky Dillwyn. He also lives at the same sanctuary in Las Vegas. He was on his way to a feed transport where he was going to be fattened up to be slaughtered. But he escaped the truck. I went to meet him last summer, and it was quite an experience. Upon meeting him, he jumped into a pool, nuzzled his nose into the water, picked up the water, shot it towards me, came over for a, a belly rub, and off he went to explore his surroundings. He came back again, and I was able to pet him again and interact. A playful, enjoy life type being is someone who lives the gospel. I can go on with many more stories, but I will stop there. I will stop there, but I will encourage you to look at your life and look at the possibilities that are out there to interact with these sentient beings created by God that are all entitled to live the gospel and to share the gospel. And they do. 
These stories do not come out as much as some others, but you can make them happen in your life if you make choices in your life and make determinations to expand your thinking, maybe change your habits a little bit, and interact with these beautiful beings. The result is an incredible two-way highway of compassion and commitment and peace for all of us. And as Jesus goes on to say in the gospel, many things will happen in a negative sense. But when we live the gospel message, see it in each other, all of each other, and appreciate it, we have so much to live for. Well, my friends, that's my message for you on this Thursday morning. As always, I hope it was helpful. I always look forward to your comments and your thoughts. I always appreciate you being here with me. Let's just take a moment or two of silent reflection, and then we'll end with a prayer. Most loving God and Savior, we always appreciate your gospel message. Let us recognize and also appreciate that this gospel message is for all creation, and all creation is to share it with one another. All that we share this planet with, all creation, have an opportunity to teach us many things about the gospel, bringing us to higher levels of compassion, commitment, and peace in our life. Let us always open our minds and hearts to those possibilities. My friends, I wish you a wonderful Thursday today, and I will see you back here on Sunday. Take care, everyone.